Nelson Bailey. I'm Bailey and I am a clairvoyant psychic medium and spiritual healer based in New Zealand. And today's video is going to be on the false light and the false sight. <laughs> so um, as I make my videos I have experiences that sort of lead on to the next video and um, I'm going to talk about the astral realm and psychic ability and uh, soul maturity and how we get clairvoyance and psychics uh, reading things that aren't actually going on. And then I'm going to talk about um, the higher self and, and this also pertains to the false ascension grid, the higher self and then the astral and how you can get really, really confused with messages um, because you're going to, be, your ego wants to believe the messages you're receiving from the astral or, for, or from the tri trickster energies uh, because it's so glitz and glam and it makes you so important. Um, and it'll also, yeah, yeah, okay, it, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, so, okay. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, well, I, I've written some basic notes, but I'm just going to get into it. Um, so essentially, if you awaken, like for many of us, we have moved through the new age deception. We are aware of the new age and we are aware of pseudo spirituality and we are knowing, you know, you've got to move out of that and uh, mature and become yourself. And what happens... Um, is that a lot of souls awaken or they believe they have awakened um, but they're still very much in their ego and the lower chakras and the lower chakras haven't been cleared and this is where soul maturity comes in and this is why taking responsibility for your energy body and your chakra system and and deciding to go to a spiritual healer or deciding to tune in to your own energy system and see what you need to do, or deciding to clear childhood trauma. Childhood trauma, childhood integration, um, and childhood healing is the basis of all spiritual healing. Um, if you want to move out of, um, and more into, I would say, more maturity as a man or a woman, the first thing you want to do is do childhood clearing, childhood integration, and childhood um, healing. Otherwise, you're going to stay spiritually um, in an energy that's very, very uh, unintegrated. And you'll continue to just sort of replay your childhood trauma um, over and over in a belief system. So what happens is, um, and we've all got some type of childhood trauma. We all have it because it's the nature of um, incarnating onto the earth at this point in time. We are not yet in um, higher manifestations of family. Um, and so we are all still experiencing dualistic experiences. Um, and, and it's very, very important for, for spiritual maturity to uh, clear out that childhood wounding. Because what I've seen with a lot of this astral stuff, and when as I've been observing stuff that's been playing out, um, a lot of souls who sort of stay in the false light or the astral or even the false ascension grid that I fear um the false ascension grid is a little bit different to the false light but it is still uh not of organic natural spiritual order um and these things um okay so I'm gonna go actually into Atlantis and um I'm just going to talk about how the astral plane got created and 
um, how at the fall of Atlantis and also the last few years how this pertains to Atlantis. I've done a few other videos of this but I have not gone into the depth that I'm about to go into. The astral realm got created in Atlantis when we fell into a denser state of consciousness and this is when we had the split of leadership of the brotherhood um, where in service to self was created um, on earth leadership and we had a lot of people decide that uh, they were going to come into leadership positions that were not trained. Um, they had ulterior motives. Um, and as the fall of consciousness happened in, the, in that three-year period, um, a lot of portals got opened. And very, um, and the, some of the leaders of Atlantis actually welcomed in uh, nefarious beings, uh, believing that they were gods um, or that they could become gods. There was a lot of stuff that took place in the consciousness drop that actually set up our entire experience of the third dimensional realm in the old world planetary cycle. And so this is sort of how the astral got created. And the astral realm is like, um, so, you're, uh, so you're awakened and there is this realm of uh, density around the earth. And that's third world density, psychic energy. And it's just something that has been, and it got created at the Wall of Atlantis because stuff was opened up, grid systems were tinkered with, portals were opened, beings were invited in, we had ETs uh, um, invited in that were not from the highest order. Um, there are benevolent ETs, there are, but stuff went haywire. And a lot of stuff that got created in Atlantis... Um, was from service to self. So in the astral realm, we all know that there is service to self beings operating in the astral and there's energies and archetypal energies. I've gone into this in the New Age Goddess. I've talked it in the, some of my false ascension videos and how this happens. Um, and it's also a mark of consciousness. So, and also with Atlantis, a lot of people who have gotten really caught up in the ascension the last few years, like really got on board with them, with the new earth. And, you know, they gained all these followers um, and a lot of their services were not done properly. Um, it was very, very glitz and glam. It was like, I'm here to save humanity. I'm a 5D new earth leader. Their service to self, um, they're coming from the lower ego. And, and just from my observations, a lot of souls that sort of jumped on that band, bandwagon uh, most likely did some uh, naughty service to self things at the fall of Atlantis. And so there was this massive changeover that took place over the last three years. And um, you're really going to see this uh, false ascension stuff start to collapse in on itself because we are moving out of Atlantis now. We are not in the Atlantean old world planetary cycle anymore. We have moved into a brand new creation cycle with the return of the matriarch energies. So this is the return of the divine feminine. So this is why it's really, really important at this time. Um, why it's important to discern between the astral and who and true psychic ability. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit. And, and it's like an initiation for all of us to move out of that third world, you know, astral, tri tricky, trickster energy. We are all capable of um, discerning. We, are, we, we have it together. We can do it. Um, however, a lot of souls who are sort of operating from the false light or the astral, um, which is just like this uh, realm it's like you awaken and you can go straight into it and then you've got to move your way up through the energies. And yeah, um, and there's so many people right now awakening to the fact of new age deception and trickery in the astral. And that's a sign that the consciousness is evolving and we're evolving out of this very um, immature way of experiencing spiritual energies. Because that's what it is. The astral is full of low morals and ethics. Um, it's not embodied, it's not mature, and it's not coming from a very, very high state of soul integrity. So, um, yeah, okay. So, and, and you know, a lot of stuff has taken place over the last few years, and there's a lot of clearing starting to happen for a lot of people. 
and um, um, we are we are all moving out of density, uh, whether it looks like that or not. <laughs> so, um, and there's just there's, there's no more time left on the earth to be playing those type of games in the astral. You could probably get away with it the last few years, last 10, 10 15 years, but you cannot. We are moving and evolving now out of that state of consciousness. So it's not going to hold itself because it's full of lies. So, um, okay, let's talk about the false light and false sight. So what I've seen happen, um, so I'm highly clairvoyant. I've had a lot of experiences uh, with this type of energy um, and how first and foremost, if someone is coming from the astral and claiming to be psychic, most likely they have not cleared their childhood trauma. They have not cleared um, wounding. They have not taken responsibility for their light body, for their energy, for their chakras. They are most likely not taking responsibility for their everyday life. They are most likely pouring it off to something else. Um, they are probably not taking into consideration their children. Um, they're not rooted in the real world reality. Um, and when you're in the astral, there is a lot of magical thinking. There is a lot of incredible amount of self-importance. If you have psychic ability, you're not important. Um, I'm sorry to say, you're not important. It doesn't matter if you have high psychic ability or not. We're here all on the earth together. I can think of much more exciting things than having psychic ability. For example, I really want to try investing. <laughs> but um, there's so much more exciting things that you could try your hand at, you know, instead of thinking you're so important for being a psychic. It's not that exciting. Um... And it's, there's a lot of glitz and glam around it as well. And that we are all naturally psychic. We all have intuition. Um, and we, you know what I mean? It's not this, this special thing. Um, and in the astral, uh, people will, will really, really hone in on their own self-importance. And most likely they will be looking for money. They will be looking for a state of self-importance. They will be looking for... Um, people to sort of glorify and glamorize them and they're also looking for people who they want to save and there's a, a very big savior complex with the astral and psychic ability um a good psychic and healer knows that you're not here to save anybody that's not your business um that's a very immature um all souls on their soul journey are responsible for themselves um otherwise you are going to interfere on someone else's evolutionary pathway um, however, I do know there's a lot of learning lessons involved for people who um, allow someone to be told by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. There's a lot of learning lessons involved in those types of situations. Um, so what happens if someone is channeling from the astral is that they can start receiving images or dreams, but they're really just inserts. And what's happening if they are coming from the astral or the false ascension grid? The false ascension grid is a little different but it's a similar energy and in the astral there is a lot of beings naughty beings just sort of like beings that energies that need a little bit of a slap on the hand like that's how i like to look at it it's energies that you just need to be like okay you can get out of my field my energy field because i didn't invite you and it's it's just a reality it's a reality of being here and um so if someone is channeling from the astral uh, they will get inserts um, or they'll get visions from beings that they're channeling from that are literally just naughty. They are naughty beings. <laughs> and um, almost I want to say like a 12-year-old who's like, oh, I'm going to be naughty. I've got some freedom and oh, what can I do here? It's that type of energy. And then you, if you're channeling from the astral, you're inviting in this energy into the earth realm. That's what you're doing. You're inviting this energy into the earth realm via your vessel. And then you are transmitting the energy. So, um, and it's also playing in your consciousness. So if you don't have the necessary discernment, boundaries, um, and soul maturity, and you're channeling from the astral, your consciousness is going to get overlaid with the energies of the astral beings or whoever it is that you're working with 
and you're not going to be able to discern if it's your higher self coming through to you or the astral and because you've gotten so used to being so self-important and being a channel and all this other stuff you're not you're going to want to listen to the naughty beings because they make you feel important um, and, and as your higher self tries to make contact you're not going to be able to know the difference and you're going to get really vastly confused um, so I'm just going to say straight away that spirit is clarity and when someone is speaking from integrity, truth, and honesty, you can feel it in the energy. So um, I was going to say, and this is how you get false sight. This is how you get people who have dreams and come and say to you, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what? Um, and and you look at them and maybe they're doing lots of drugs. That's a, that's another thing. If you're using drugs and you're claiming to be a psychic, you're, you're not... Information cannot come through you if you are dense in your energy field. And drugs and heavy amounts of alcohol create density and invite in energies that are a match to that energy. So um, things like weed. All good psychics and channels know you, you like it's just a, a part, like it's a rule of thumb. You've got to keep your vessel clean and clear if you want to receive clear information. Um, yeah, so like a lot of people, and like this thing with ayahuasca too, I haven't taken ayahuasca, but a lot of people who are very, very filled with trauma, uh, very low self-worth and haven't done the necessary work to know who they are, they will go into the astral or the false light and, um, sort of give their energies away to these beings, believing that, um... You know, they are these masters or, or, you know, various other things. And this is how you get people who get very confused. They are receiving images and um, stuff that's not coming from the higher self. Um, and there's a lot of delusion in them. And you can tell in the energy if you watch videos. I would go look up Galactic Federation and go and watch um, some of those videos and see how you feel when you're watching it. That is the number one way to tell if someone is legit or not. You want to feel the energy as they're speaking um, to see if this person is legit. And it's like the last three or four years, you pro as I said, you probably could have gotten away with it. But because things are changing so rapidly and we're moving up, like there's just no way and people are opening up and becoming more discerning. There's no way that you can sort of just trick people like that anymore. Um, and it's not okay. And it's not nice either. It's not nice to pretend to be a psychic because you want money and you want to be... Like, that's not a nice thing to do. And that's another thing with the astral is um, you have to be a match for the energies of low morals and ethics in the first place. So, um, and I've said before in one of my videos... Um, you can only ever channel what you're already full of. And I see that in the New Age Goddess video. Um, yeah, so false light and false sight. And yeah, okay, is there anything else that I need to say? False light, false sight. Um, as we sort of move on and up, as we move on and up, a lot of souls, um, I'm also not here to point fingers at people that are channeling from the astral. I'm very much aware that there is probably very, very um, hefty learning lessons involved in soul maturity um, in these types of situations. I don't know what these um, souls have done in their past lives. I don't know their soul journeys. I'm just speaking from a very, very, um, a very, very, I guess, practical and um, overview of what I've been seeing play out. And as we sort of move on and up and we evolve out of um, the need to sort of give ourselves away um, to things, because that's very old world consciousness, you know, it's very old world to give yourself away to a guru or um, to a spiritual master that's very, very old world and we're not needing that here anymore. You know, we are becoming ourselves. So um, I am going to say that the astral and false light, false sight, plays a part in the evolution of the earth. 
this is a part of Atlantean uh, energies and in order to evolve and mature out of that trickster energies you have to experience them um, and, and learn from that and become more reliant on your own intuition yes and yeah there's a lot of yeah and as I said before if you haven't had the necessary understanding of um, interference psychic attack um, you can very easily believe what you're receiving is true um, yeah and there's always a difference in receiving information if it's coming from something nefarious because it will usually create fear it will usually create fear in you and it'll try and distort you and push you off um, and usually if you are receiving stuff from the higher realms and your higher self and your team it's clarifying it's supportive it's loving and it, it yeah I, I always when spirit the higher spiritual realms are contacting or guiding it's always loving it's always supportive it's always supportive of you and I'm also gonna say guides love you so much but then sometimes they don't give you the full answers because we're having an experience um, if someone is speaking from the higher spiritual realms they are here to love you and support you into higher expressions of your soul. They are not here to fleece you and they are not here to make you dependent on them because that's not the purpose of soul evolution. Soul evolution is becoming one with our higher selves. And so you, a, a, a person who has come, you know, they are very aware that... Um, they're only here as a helping hand while you're on your journey here on the earth and through the cosmos. Because we're all here maturing into more of our soul essence and our soul light. Okay. That, yeah, okay, I thought I, okay, I'm just going to leave that there. Am I? Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there's also nothing to fear because once you have made the discernment and you have your energy tools and you, you know, you're trusting in yourself and your own guidance, there's really nothing to fear. And once you understand intuition and how simple it is, you can't go wrong. And yes, sometimes we have experiences where we're like, oh my gosh, I did the wrong thing. But later down the track, we understand why we had that experience. So, yes, okay. I think I'm just going to leave it there. Um, and thank you so much for watching.